Hello, and welcome to a three-parter session on using masks in Blender. And so, what are we talking about here? We are talking about masks, which are things in Blender that can control the area of an effect. So you can use it for blurring, for just taking things out. You could even do it for transitions. It's very cool, and there's a lot to know, so let's get started. In earlier sessions on this channel, we have talked about using strips inside of the video sequence editor as mask modifiers. Uh, and those are great for simple little jobs. But here we're going to talk about the real thing, masks that you can create inside of the movie clip editor. And they can be used in the video sequence editor and also in the compositor, which we will hopefully see in a later session. All right, so let's get started. In this first session of this three-parter, we are going to talk about how to create masks. But before we do that, let me just talk a bit about what we see on screen here. So I have a short movie loaded up into the video sequence editor. Uh, it is the Sprite Fright uh, Blender open movie. I have uh, three different markers set up uh, on the timeline, which we can uh, jump around to using the marker menu. You can jump to previous or jump to next. I find this handy for doing animations with masks uh, to get an idea of what sections of the video that I need to animate the mask for. That's going to be the third part that we talk about, but they are already set up here. Uh, and we will start just by creating masks for the different characters here that we can see at this particular frame. Okay, so with that said, let's get started creating our masks. To do that, we need to make use of the Movie Clip Editor, which is available in a couple of different prepared workspaces for us. So we'll start by clicking the plus button here. And we have two options, and they are both under the VFX category. First one is masking, and that's the one we will pick. The other one is motion tracking, which we will make use of in a future video where we talk about how you can track a subject over time and then automatically get your mask to move with that subject. It's pretty cool, uh, but for now we're just going to talk about creating the mask. So we will open up this one, masking. All right, and here is the new workspace we'll be working with. There are various components here, not all of which we will need. Uh, right here, you'll just see this uh, image of a mouse. This is just something that I'm going to start using in my videos. It's screencast keys, so you can see uh, what I'm clicking or what buttons I'm pressing. So just to let you know, that's what that is. So a quick tour about what we have on the screen here. This is the dope sheet editor, and it's going to be handy. We will be able to see how things are animated over time. So we don't need it right now, but we'll definitely need it in the third part to this tutorial. This is the compositor, which we don't need at all right now. When we start looking at green screening, this will come in handy. Uh, this is the outliner, which we don't need for this. And here is our usual properties editor which we can certainly use right now if we needed to adjust the resolution, uh, but I've already got that set, so we don't need that. This big space here, this is the movie clip editor, and that's where we'll be spending most of our time. And if we drag this up a little bit, you'll see down here we have our timeline editor, and this is definitely handy because we'll be able to uh, see those markers that we have put into place and also to jump around to the different markers. But again, right now, uh, you can see here, we are already at that exact frame we need to be at. We're just gonna create masks on this specific frame, so we don't actually need to make use of it right now. All right, so let's move things around a bit. Let's just adjust the spacing here, just so we have all the space we need. Like I said, we don't need any of these things. We'll just give all of our space to the movie clip editor. Okay, so now we can get started. So when you create masks, you're always creating masks on top of things. You have to be able to see what you're doing. So the very first thing we need to do 
is open the movie file that we want to create the masks for. So for that, we can go up here and click on this open button. Once this file viewer is displayed, just go ahead and select the video that you want to create the masks for. This is the one I want to do, Sprite Fright, and click open clip. And now it's loaded. And as soon as the movie is loaded, we now have a, a bunch of different options here. We have new tabs here along the right hand pane. Uh, but let's first start just by using the mouse wheel to scroll it out a little bit so we can see the whole thing. So now that it's loaded, here's the plan. We are going to create a mask for this person, this person, or Sprite, and these two as well. And we'll do it as two separate masks, just to show you how the interface works and how different masks, how different um, mask shapes can be combined. So to create a mask, the first step after loading in the video file is to go up to the top right corner and click this new button to create a new mask. Okay, now that that's done, we have even more things showing on our screen. Now we have all of these different buttons we can click on for uh, working with the masks. I'll just keep that open, but I, I typically don't use those. What I like to do, especially when I have more than one mask, is to name it. So now that button for creating a new mask has disappeared. Uh, and instead we have these different buttons here. That is the button you would click on to create a new one. Uh, for now, let's just click in here. This is where we can go to name our mask. So we're going to start by creating a mask that will cover the faces of these three sprites here. So I will call this three sprite mask, press enter. And now I am good to start. Uh, so when it comes to masks, there are basically two options you can use. You can first just uh, add a, a predefined shape, which is either a circle or a square, or you can draw your mask by clicking uh, around on the screen. Uh, for this first thing, we are going to use those shapes. So to do that, we have two options. We can go to the add menu and just choose the circle or the square. Or just like in the video sequence editor, uh, we can use the keyboard shortcut of uh, shift A, capital A, and we'll get that same option there. So here there it is, add circle or square. So let's start with a circle because these sprites, their faces are pretty circular. Okay. So I made that choice, but can't see the circle. The reason is uh, by default, your masks will always appear in the bottom left corner of the video. Uh, let me just use the middle mouse button and scroll over here. And there you can see there is the circle that got added. Now uh, we are going to take this one and just put it over this sprite's face. So we could click on the move button. And then from there, now we can just move our mouse around. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'll left click to place and that's it. But again, like with the video sequence editor, we have our shortcut keys. So I could press the G key instead and I get that same action. So when we zoom in on this Sprite. You can see that circle was just about the right size. We don't really need to do anything else. Uh, but if we wanted to do other things like scale this circle so that it's smaller or larger, again, we can press these buttons here uh, or just press the shortcut key S and then we can start resizing that circle as we need to. Okay. Now, that was pretty easy. The next thing to do is add these circular masks to these other two sprites over here. What I would suggest though, is instead of just going to add right now, I like to create different layers. You can have a mask that is comprised of multiple layers and each can be animated separately from each other. Uh, that seems to work well for me. So let me show you how that's done. What we're going to do is we will go over to our panel over here, click on the mask 
tab. And I'll expand this out a little bit so we can see it better. So right here uh, under mask layers, uh, there is an item here called mask layer. Whenever you create a new mask, it always starts out with one mask layer. I want to create three in total, one for each of these sprites. So the first thing I'm going to do is just double click here to rename this and I'll call this left sprite. Okay. And then to add a new mask layer, just click on this plus sign. And there we go. This is going to be our second mask layer. Now, when we add uh, a new mask using the add button, it will be added to this layer. And I'll just double click now and call this middle sprite. All right, so now let's go ahead and add the mask. This time, let's go with a square. So I'll add the square. And once again, I'll have to zoom out a bit so I can see it. So there it is over there. I will press the G key this time and then just move my mouse over to there. All right, so let's zoom in a bit with the mouse wheel. Okay, that looks good enough. Okay, so let's do one more. Uh, so again, click the plus and it'll create a new layer and I'll rename this as right, just like that. And this time I will use shift A and I'll do a circle again. And this time I'm not even gonna zoom in and out. I'll just press the G key. I know it's in the bottom left, so I'll just start moving my mouse over this way. And there it is and just position it there. Okay, so that's it. The, we have our three sprite mask with three separate layers. And it doesn't seem that useful right now, but once we get into the animation stage, you'll see it helps to keep things clean. All right, so that's it for setting up these masks. Before I move on to talk about how to create a mask by clicking and creating points, let me show you something you can see from mask display. And I will turn on this option for overlay. There. So you may recall from when we talked about using uh, strips, color strips as mask modifiers, the basic idea is that when it comes to masks, anything that is white is visible and anything that is black is invisible. And then anything that's in between will be transparent to some degree. Right, uh, so the masks that we created right now, you can see we created those three shapes. And once we start to apply this, uh, those sections will be visible and the rest will not. And we'll see that in a future session. So for now, let's just turn that off. And now let's talk about the second way to create a mask. So. Uh, this way is going to be, again, by clicking on the different spots where you want the mask to surround. Uh, and before we do that, we have to create a new mask because this mask that we have set up is the three sprite mask specifically for these three characters here. Now we want to create a new mask for this uh, elder sprite in the middle. So to create that new mask, Go up to this section here and click this button. It looks like the copy button, but in fact, it's to create a new mask. So we'll click that. And again, uh, it gives it a default name of just mask. So let's double click in there and I will call this elder sprite. Press enter. Okay. And now let's zoom in a little bit because what we're going to do is sort of like painting or drawing, what you do if you want to create a mask by clicking on points is you have to hold down on the control key and then use your left mouse button and just start clicking points around your subject. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm holding down on control key and I will start clicking on these points just around the face area, uh, maybe just like that. So as you can see, every time I click, it creates a point. And then, oh wait, uh, I, I only wanted to do this guy's face. So let me press Control Z to undo that and that. Okay, go around the face. There we go. And up to that point and I'm done.
So I'll zoom in a little bit. You'll see I did not uh, fully complete it. You don't need to. Uh, let me prove that. Let me go ahead and go to mask display and click on overlay. So once again, we'll see the black and white. Blender knows uh, to basically join the endpoints. So this is the mask that we've created. And that's pretty much it. So one thing you'll notice, especially when we have it in this overlay mode, is that it's very angular when you create a mask this way. Not like the nice circle effect that we had before, but we can change that. So each one of these points, you can have very fine control over it. So for example, let's do this one here because it's more obvious. If I click, left click on this point, and then I go to the mask menu, and click on this one, set handle type. The shortcut is the letter V. Then it gives us some options. And if I choose free, then at that point, Actually, it's a little bit hard to see with the overlay on, so let's turn that off. Let me turn that off here. Okay, so now if I scroll in, zoom in a little bit more, you can see now we have these two white uh, circles here. These are the little handles that allow us to change the shape of the line that uh, connects these different points. So as an example, I'll just click and drag on this one. And you can see now I can get that bending effect, the rounded effect, so it won't be so uh, angular. Uh, at any point, you can tweak the points. So if you had placed it on this spot, but then realized, ah, actually, it should have been a little bit over, go ahead and click and drag that. So you can you have full control over you know, where these points are and how the different lines are curved as they go from one point to the next. So if I wanted to continue with that action, and maybe this is way too angular over here, left click on that. I can press the V key to get that menu of handle types. And again, I'll go to free. And then now I can adjust this one as well. So like that, like that, even more like that, okay? So then now it's more along this shape. So let me turn overlay back on. And this is the effect that we're getting now. Okay, so it's really nice. We have a lot of control over the shape of your mask. Uh, sometimes it might feel like a little bit too much control, especially when it gets to uh, animating a mask to cover uh, a subject as it moves over time. Uh, but you have that ability. Okay, so let me turn that off and zoom this out. And one last thing I wanted to share with you before we go is about feathering. The, the feathering option gives you a nice uh, faded uh, transition. Uh, so the first thing you have to do is make sure you have all your points selected. So you can do that by pressing the A key. Now all of my points are selected. And then with those points selected, you have two options uh, as usual. We can click on this button, scale feather, or you can see it has that shortcut key there, Alt S. So I will press Alt S. And then now we have this green line surrounding everything. This area from the white line to the green line, that's the area where it is going to slowly uh, transition with that effect. So I'll bring it out to here. Uh, and then now let me turn on the overlay again. So mask display, overlay. And now you can see we have within the white points, we have solid white, but then from the white line to the green line is where we have the gradient from white to black. So that will indicate then that, that whatever we do with this mask, whether it's a sensor or a Gaussian blur, it will uh, have a nice uh, blend to it. And it won't be like a very sharp uh, distinction between where we have the mask and where we don't. Okay, so uh, that's it for this video. I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please uh, click the like and subscribe so you can see more content because the next step is how we actually apply this mask to uh, your video strips in the video sequence editor. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thanks and bye now. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about is how you can use masks to... No, just shut up. Um, so with the masks, what they are, 
is that you must finish your work, Carl. There is so much to do. We okay. mustn't dawdle. First of all, first of all, okay, my name is Michael. Okay, and secondly, you're not even a mask. You're like uh, some kind of like PNG file with transparency that I created in GIMP. So just.